Immortal technique. Rise up, young brother. This is not your time to die. Viva la Revolution begins with the revolution of the mind, with analyzing who you are, where your people are from, what the principles of this country are. I began to not only ask questions of the world, but also of myself. You know, what changes did I want to make in the way I was, in the way I am? Album after album after album, I always stayed true to my roots. You know, I was offered the opportunity to sell out plenty of times, and I never just took that. Because it wasn't about money to me. You can't buy that type of respect. You, know, you can't buy your integrity from people. And whether you choose to accept that responsibility or not, like I told you, it will come find you. Divine success is not by what you have rather about what you had to sacrifice to get where you are. Immortal technique, remember me when I'm gone. I encrypted my lyrics to stay alive in a song. So you'll always keep a piece of my spirit inside. When you struggle to complete what I started before I died. But some of you won't survive the changes the earth makes. Swallowed by tsunamis, hurricanes and earthquakes. And that's just the first stage if you cannot reverse ways. And realize that we are one regardless of our birthplace. I was born in the Hospital Militar de Lima in South America and Peru. Um, I came to this country when I was about two or three years old because of the severe violence and economic downturn of America. And my father thought it'd be a great idea to find peace. Uh, Harlem. I could always rhyme uh, from the time I was about nine years old, but I never really took it seriously until I uh, got out on parole. I was incarcerated because I would get into fights non-stop with people. And when I say non-stop, I would be honest right now and say that sometimes I would just look for reasons to get into fights. You know, when I was incarcerated, yeah, I battled other people. I wrote rhymes while, you know, I was just in my cell or when they threw me in the hole a couple of times and I didn't have nothing else to do but stare at a fucking wall in my boxers like, okay, cool. And the Native American trustee basically gave me a sheet of paper and a pencil like here. Don't go crazy. I grew up in a time in which there was more police corruption than you could ever possibly imagine. In a city that seemed almost lawless. When you go down to 42nd Street now in New York City, it looks like Disneyland. I remember when it was full of pimps and prostitutes and thieves and card sharks. And from that experience, I grew to have a very aggressive nature because in New York, it didn't matter if you went to a good school or a bad school, you were going to encounter some kind of conflict or confrontation sometime in your life. The voice of racism preaching the gospel is devilish. A fake church called the prophet Muhammad a terrorist. Forgetting God is not religion, but a spiritual bond. And Jesus is the most quoted prophet in the Quran. They're gonna bomb innocent people, trying to murder Saddam when they gave him those chemical weapons to go to war with Iran. This is the information that they hold back from Peter Jennings. Cause Condoleezza Rice is just a new age Sally Hemings. I break it down with critical language and spiritual anguish. The Judas a hang with the guilt of betraying Christ. You murdered him, stole his religion, and painted him white. Translated in psychologically tainted philosophy. Conservative political right wing ideology. Glued together sloppily the blasphemy of a nation. I got my back to the wall because I'm facing assassination. Guantanamo Bay, federal incarceration. How could this be the land of the free? Home of the brave, indigenous holocaust, and the home of the slaves. Corporate America dancing off beat to the rhythm. They really think this country never sponsored terrorism. Listen. Human rights violations, we continue the saga. El Salvador and the Contras in Nicaragua. And on top of that, they still want to take me to prison. Just because I won't trade humanity for patriotism. And that's realism, you punk motherfucker. It's not that rich people are smarter than poor people. It's just that they know how the system works. And within the story, people ask me, well, is the martyr about you dying? Do you need to die for revolution? And I tell people, no, you don't need to die for revolution. 
In fact, that doesn't really help the revolution. What you need to do is live for revolution, because that's a lot harder to do. At some point, there just won't be any more natural resources. Then when you look at Iraq and you say, oh man, that, no, no blood for oil. Okay, well what about if it's blood for water? And it becomes a different story. Then my children have nothing to drink. We're going to war for water. Because that's what the world is going to turn into. But at the same time, when you speak your mind, you shouldn't be afraid to speak your mind because you don't come from a perfect place. Every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. You know, if you think free, you will be free. But I would tell young people, listen, if you're going through something really fucked up right now, just realize that someone is going through it before. And there is someone out there with a perspective that can help you. You know, and, and they should never give up. But I see a lot of people give up in life. You know, and I don't mean hang yourself. But I mean just give up, just settle in life for something that's not their dream. Don't be afraid to, don't be afraid to fail. Be afraid to be so afraid that you never tried. And I ain't no prophet, but that's the fucking prophecy.